I'd like to call the Lancaster Central School District Board of Education meeting to order. In the unlikely event of an emergency, if we have to evacuate the auditorium, please note the locations of the exits. At this time, I ask you to silence your cell phones and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for individual reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Individual. Thank you, everyone. Four point uh, presentations. Four point one. We start with some uh, very happy news this evening. Teacher tenure recognition. Uh, I'll ask uh, Dr. Kufel to start off, and I'll join you on front, Doc. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'd like to have the following teachers join me uh, up here on stage, if you will, or in front. Mrs. Katie Pregitzer, Mrs. Lindsay Strano. Mrs. Rebecca Olesenko, and Mr. Patrick Smith. So come on down. Now, let, let me start by saying uh, one of, we're very fortunate to be recognizing four teachers here on, on this evening um, for tenure, earning tenure. Uh, but, but more importantly, these are four fantastic teachers, and I'm going to highlight each one of them uh, in, a, in a little bit here to talk about what makes them special and unique to Lancaster. Um, the one thing that I think they all have in common, and there are several, uh, but the one that I wanted to highlight is that they're dynamic teachers who are always striving to improve what they do so that their students can benefit um, in their learning journeys. So I could speak at length about each one of uh, these uh, individuals, and I'm going to try to highlight a few things. So first, Mrs. Katie Bre Pregitzer is a social studies teacher at Lancaster Middle School. She actually uh, student taught at the high school right here and was a student at this very building and graduated a few years back. Um, she has a cheerful personality and is always willing to learn from her colleagues as well as push her colleagues. Uh, this is also a commonality that the four of them share. Katie's colleagues and administrators spoke glowingly about her as a teacher and a person. Some of the wonderful comments include, she is a nurturing teacher whose demeanor It's a cliffhanger there for you. <laughs> Conserving paper. Whose demeanor is a positive influence to her seventh grade students. She spends countless hours during and after school to develop quality instruction based on best practices and willingly accept, accepts constructive feedback from her colleagues and administration. Put that down there. Mrs. Pregitzer. Be, uh, brings creativity, energy, and enthusiasm to the department and school. She is organized, hardworking, and is a team player. We're lucky to have her. Congratulations to Mrs. Katie Pregitzer. Sure, you can go ahead. <laughs> no, you're fine. Mrs. Lindsay Strano is an AIS teacher and reading specialist at the middle school. Lindsay's excitement for learning and passion for teaching is contagious for students and teachers alike. Mrs. Strano has a wide variety of teaching tools in her repertoire, but is always looking to expand. Lindsay's students benefit from her creativity, organization, and clarity with which she approaches the learning process. Mrs. Strano is always willing to do whatever it takes for her students and the students in Lancaster one thing that the four of them also have in common. Today I happened to visit Mrs. Strano's classroom and where her and Mrs. Gadios um, kind of developed a, a co-taught class where they're working with some of our students um, with, with some of our, our highest needs. It was a great lesson and this just goes to show developing from the ground up that, that Mrs. Strano is willing to do whatever it takes to help her students. I think a quote that sums up uh, Mrs. Strano as a teacher is through her excitement for learning, students gravitate towards her and can't help but become excited about the learning process. Congratulations, Mrs. Strano. We 
We were for fortunate to hire Mrs. Rebecca Oleksenko several years ago as a Spanish teacher. Since being hired, she has selflessly split time between the high school and the middle school. She has done so without complaint, and she has done so masterfully, which is no small feat as reaching the middle school students and reaching the high school students is not an easy task, but especially doing it in the same day. So quite impressive. A quote that one of her colleagues gave us, Rebecca has a genuine care for the students in her class. That embodies who Rebecca is as a teacher, but is also a commonality that the four of these individuals share. She strives to engage students through the use of technologies, a variety of activities, and making the learning process fun. We had a discussion last year, uh, and Rebecca mentioned something that kind of stuck with me. She highlighted some of the uh, opportunities and the wealth of opportunities that teachers in Lancaster have in terms of professional development uh, and the ones she had access to in Lancaster. Um, essentially, I think what, what she was saying was she was fortunate to be here and fortunate to be able to have these opportunities. Well, Rebecca, I would say we are also fortunate to have you in the Lancaster family. So congratulations on earning tenure and great job. <laughs> Mr. Patrick Smith is one of our fine math teachers at Lancaster Middle School. Mr. Smith is hardworking, knowledgeable, and his approach to math is very simple. Not all students enjoy math. Now I'm paraphrasing now. Not all students enjoy math, but all students can enjoy his math class and learn quite a bit along the way. Patrick is able to accomplish this by providing engaging activities, using cooperative learning, offering clear and concise lessons, and utilizing his dynamic personality. Patrick has taken on several roles while at the middle school and is involved in the Lancaster community beyond the classroom. He's truly a team player. He and Judy Zitska, another fantastic person and teacher, worked tirelessly to develop a uh, co-taught, a true co-taught classroom to benefit their students. In that process, I was one of about 10 adults who had visited the classroom to learn with them and learn from them, and it was truly a fantastic experience. Uh, I would say, Patrick, keep up the great work. Congratulations as well on earning tenure. Now, I did try to come up with one commonality that the four of them shared, and I, I hope it was apparent and obvious that uh, there are four fantastic teachers that we are, we are lucky to have, but I would say more importantly, these are four fantastic people. Congratulations once again, and good luck. Good evening. If I could have Elaine Muscarella come up front. So like the secondary folks, a commonality that we have here is a fantastic person. Um, and I'd like to congratulate her on getting tenure. Elaine is um, very dedicated to her job and supporting the students at Hillview Elementary School. As a K-3 meeting and reading and math academic intervention and services teacher, she instructs students so that they are able to meet their academic goals, some of our students that struggle the most. She implements a variety of resources to monitor the progress of her students and adjust her lessons. Mrs. Muscarella incorporates instructional resources and philosophies to better the instruction of her students. She is Hillview's second grade data coach, and she promotes the use of data to enhance instructional planning, not only in her own room, but in across the second grade. Um, she works closely with the other reading specialists, with classroom teachers, and with the sports staff members to help her students. And her students enjoy working with her every day. When they walk out of her in and out of her classroom, you will see them with smiles on their faces. Mrs. Muscarella is also excellent at communicating with parents to inform them about their child's progress in school and how they can help their students. She's also willing to assist with any task at a moment's notice, and that is greatly appreciated by the rest of the staff and her principal, Mrs. Moeller. In addition, she regularly attends and assists with school and PTO events. Mrs. Muscarella is an asset to Hillview and to Lancaster, and we are lucky to have her. Alicia Janicki, come on down. Um, 
so in in preparation for uh, for tonight, which is it's uh, an incredibly enjoyable experience, I think, as as a, an administrator, and certainly I think for the board of education. But I get to kind of think back a little bit and reminisce, and I won't take too long when I reminisce, but I'm thinking back about three years or so ago or over the summer, and there's a lot of first here with Alicia in that um, she's our first uh, hearing teacher or teacher of the deaf for Lancaster schools that we've actually hired um, as a district employee. Uh, formerly and in years past, we've contracted with Erie One BOCES and had some wonderful people, but I think about it, Alicia, like that old saying about being in the right place at the right time. Well, the board gave us the approval to hire our own teacher, and we were fortunate because we were in the right place. And and uh, it worked out for us because I know you, you had the experience at BOCES was good, but they were they were also backing off a little bit on service, and it, it worked out perfectly for us. Uh, Mr. Kufel talked a little bit about it, and, and Mrs. Marchioli about, um, I think, enthusiasm. Well, I've observed a lot of Alicia's lessons and, and sessions in hearing therapy uh, programs and talk about excitement and enthusiasm for kids and, and she works with a huge huge range of students that have mild hearing impairments uh, along with students that are I guess we would call profoundly deaf and I'm just I'm blown away I think you're also certified in special ed if memory serves me too and I can see it in in her therapy and her lessons are just powerful it's it's about you know teaching kids certainly skills that they can use um, no matter where they are in the classroom but in life and I'm just it's just amazing a, a couple things that come to mind um, well I think I remember them um, ASL I remember talking to her when she first American Sign Language excuse me but her I think her skills in that area have grown tremendously and now I see her sometimes uh, talking and signing at the same time which I think is great um, I, I wish I could do that um, but T again about the passion for kids and just the incredible incredible follow-up like talk about like calling me and Sandy Camerata over the summer making sure that the, you know the kids have things that we lined up even if she wasn't going to be able to work with them come this, this following year um, active very active involvement um, statewide in an organization that's dedicated um, to hearing services and other support services for students with hearing needs. She was instrumental, I know, two years really in putting the whole conference together that was here locally. And many of our staff and other staff from the area attended, um, I think it was down in Buffalo, if memory serves, right? So um, again, uh, I just would summarize and say, uh, and the last thing that comes to mind actually is her success and her ongoing efforts to involve students with, with hearing needs in extracurricular activities is definitely comes to mind. I mean, that's huge for getting kids, especially at William Street involved, like in Good Citizens Club, Ski Club, a lot of different activities that, that I think she supported and give the kids the confidence to participate. And, and so things like that are hard to measure or see in an observation. But with Alicia, we, we are fortunate. We've got the complete uh, consummate young professional that is going to pay dividends to the district for years and years to come. So congratulations. Nice job. Uh, one thing, yeah, sorry, one thing I'd like to add as well, um, and, and congratulations to all the teachers who are getting tenure, but uh, um, Alicia Janicki is, is, plays a prominent role in not only this school district, but in, in my family's life, and my daughter had, has the unfortunate, or has the fortunate uh, opportunity to work with her on a daily basis, and um, from third grade to Court Street for hearing difficulties that were identified uh, just at the end of kindergarten, um, and now in sixth grade, uh, still works with her and, and uh, has shown her everything from lip reading to, to sign language to um, introducing to sign language club. And, and has, uh, if my wife and I are 1A and 1B, I, I would like to put uh, Miss Janicki as 1C as far as our family goes and, and her educational progress because, uh, you know, there are a lot of conversations my daughter and I have is when she gets home and they usually revolve around how her day was and, and the interaction she has with Miss Janicki. So, um, uh, and in fact, we had a conversation the other day where I asked her if she was upset this is going to be her last year at William Street, possibly the last year. And she said, I used to be worried about it, but now I know that Miss Janicki goes up to the middle school too. So uh, <laughs> she doesn't want to have to say, she goes, I just don't want to have to say goodbye to her yet. So, um, and we don't either. So congratulations to everyone, but uh, most specifically Miss Janicki. So thank you.
So I'd like to congratulate those teachers once again. Uh, I think hearing the exploits of, uh, of all those teachers and all of their, the skills that they bring, um, we are lucky in Lancaster to have such a fine uh, group of administrators and teachers. Um, and being a teacher myself, Mr. Gallagher, Mrs. Uh, Christopher, I'm sure we can attest to uh, how difficult the job is to do very well. Um, and we have teachers who do the job very well. So uh, we support you and we uh, thank you and we recognize you tonight. So thank you again. Moving on to 5.0 correspondence. Uh, do we have anyone from the board who received any correspondence? Okay. 6.0. Approval of minutes, 6.1. Could I have a motion to accept the regular session minutes from August 29th? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 7.0, items from staff organizations. Uh, is there anyone from the Lancaster Administrative and Supervisory Association here? Thank you, Mr. Marchioli. I'd like to reflect uh, that gratitude back to you because you handled that situation very well. My daughter's a freshman, my son's a senior, and it was, uh, you know, uh, we had to adjust and adapt, and I think your ability to do that and lead the students um, enables them and facilitates them to, to mirror your adaptability. So thank you very much. And we did have a great start to the school year, so thank you. Uh, anyone from the Lancaster Central Teachers Association? Anyone from the Lancaster Association of Service Personnel? <laughs> Thank you. Anyone from the Lancaster Association of Substitute Teachers? Okay. Thank you. 8.0 board reports. Does anyone on the board uh, have anything they'd like to report on? I do. Shocked, I know. Um, okay, I have a couple of things. I won't take a lot of time. As the NISBA liaison, I have a couple of things to report that's um, currently happening with NISBA. As the board knows, and I will just update the public, that the governor has signed um, a lead testing bill on the 6th of September, requiring public schools to conduct testing for their water sources for lead contamination. The board has a, um, well, we're going to go over that in a little while, but it is one of our goals for this year as well. The NISBA annual convention is fast approaching. It's next month. As of right now, the latest I've heard, only two of us are planning on attending. I'm hoping. Some of you will change your mind and join us. It is local. Attendance is low right now. Registration is low. Um, they have a feeling that money is a factor um, because of the expense of sending board members, but um, we don't have that this year because it is here in Buffalo. So I, I would encourage you um, to join us. There are two presentations that Lancaster teachers and students will be participating in, so uh, we can support our own right here in our backyard. Um, I'm sure that you're vastly awaiting this, but the 2016 bylaws and resolution book is online. Um, we didn't submit anything. We didn't really have anything, but it is there if you choose to read it. Um, and lastly, I missed sharing this the last meeting. I just wanted to put it on record that on August 30th, Cuomo did sign the veterans tax exemption to include Cold War veterans. I do believe we mentioned that at the last meeting, um, but I kind of wanted to wrap it all up in the NISBA report. Um, next, on September 7th, Dr. Valley, Dr. Perini, and I attended a presentation with Mary Ellen Ilya, who's the commissioner of New York State Education. Um, she reported on new state ed initiatives and discussed with us what's coming down the pike in the next three to five years. Um, I, I think we enjoyed her. Um, I'll speak for us if I'm wrong, correct me, but um, she inherited a lot of issues and I like her approach. I like that she takes the time to visit and talk to us. So whenever she is in town, I try and hear from the horse's mouth exactly what's going on. So while she's got a lot of work to do, I think she's headed in the right direction. Um, 
That's that. Uh, the legislative team, we met, Kelly and I attended the meeting at BOCES on September 8th. Um, it was a busy first week of school. Um, we, I submitted Lancaster's list of unfunded mandates that Dr. Valley and um, Jamie had provided. Thank you. Um, it was amazing how long that list is when we all sat down and shared our lists. Um, there were some doubles, of course, but a lot of things that weren't on our list, but that were on others that could have been on our list, but um, weren't. So it, it was amazing to me how many mandates the state has put on school districts, but don't pay for them. So we're gonna work on that. We're making a um, priorities list, and that's what we're going to bring to the legislators. Uh, that was my next thing, our priorities list. And um, lastly, we had attended our board retreat last weekend, and we had discussed so much. Um, it was a pretty productive day, I thought. And one of the things that we did discuss was the superintendent evaluation piece. And while we agreed not to make it a goal per se, we did agree to look into things. So I'm going to share with you um, a tool that I was given and found. Um, there are a wealth of tools that have little to no cost and much more meaningful and useful. So I'm going to share with you, if you could just take one and pass them down for me. Um, they're all stapled together. If you could take some time and look it over, um, let me know your thoughts. And if we could put a date on the calendar as to when we can you know, talk about it, <clears throat> talk about it. Um, I'll answer any questions. This is the this one in particular in your hand is the one Sweet Home is currently using and adopted um, that I said at the retreat that I would share with you. And um, I like it. So we don't even need, it won't even cost us anything. We can just take theirs. I believe that is all I have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Christopher. Anyone else from the board care to report out? Okay, thank you. Uh, hang on one second, sorry. I just wanted to shout out to William Street School for putting on a great open house as usual. Enjoyed it very much. Teachers are great and just love seeing everything in the classroom. So um, that's it. Thank you. I miss those days as well. I'm sure it was a wonderful event. <laughs> okay, 9.0, uh, I'm sorry, anybody else? 9.0, Superintendent's Administrative Report. Dr. Valley. Um, we haven't had a meeting since uh, August 29th, uh, so just to comment on opening days. Um, we had a lot of things go on opening days. We had two full opening, uh, two days of opening uh, with teachers and support staff, et cetera. Uh, during those days, there was uh, you know, a whole litany of things that went on, but some of them, um, our teachers had presentations on copyright parameters by Neil Schlifkin. Uh, he was the copyright attorney for Harris Beach. Um, additionally, uh, our Lancaster data coaches met with the departments and grade levels to examine last year's student achievement data and to set a course for improvement uh, for this year and beyond. The special education department had suicide prevention and recognition training. Um, additionally, all staff, all staff uh, received a truncated version of the same training. Um, faculty meetings featured Kagan uh, strategies that our administrators learned this summer in cooperative meetings uh, conference in BOCES. Uh, that was nice to see. Um, I participated in the one at William Street, but I know that they happened everywhere and that was uh, great. Um, and finally, construction went off without a hitch. Um, you know, I, thank uh, Mr. Marchioli and so many people. I can't see everyone, so if I'm missing people, I apologize. I see uh, Mr. Katar Katarski and so many other great people who, uh, whose hard work and dedication uh, proved to get us ready and going uh, for the start of school. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone for their hard work and dedication and the pride all of our people have uh, to get our schools ready. Um, the next two years, next two summers are gonna be tight. We have a lot of construction going on and uh, we're gonna be right up against it, just like we were last year. This was a little, uh, uh, well, a lot easier um, this summer, but uh, it's gonna be tight next year and uh, just wanted to thank everyone and we look forward to uh, you know, uh, the rest of a great year. Uh, Mrs. Christo Christopher mentioned the NISBA conference and uh, <coughs> I thank her for doing that. Just to highlight a little more in depthly though, uh, um, she mentioned that two presentations were accepted. One is Mark Scowron and Bonnie Blattner who will be presenting uh, 
on leadership and school culture in, in Lancaster, highlighting the wonderful work that they do with our students in building responsible and uh, productive adults. And also uh, Patricia Bruce and the tech mentors will be speaking about our uh, technology innovations in the district from infrastructure to day-to-day -day, uh, instructional usage. Um, so these will be great presentations. It's nice that uh, Lancaster's highlighted with two uh, presentations uh, at this conference. And uh, I did want to mention that um, um, SED finally released the purchasing, pur purchasing parameters for the smart schools um, funding. If you recall, uh, we, s we received $3 million uh, from smart schools. So uh, this gives us the green light to purchase additional Chromebooks. And uh, knowing uh, Dr. Perini, she, Perini, she's already got them ordered. So that's <laughs> great. Um, so uh, that's all I have to say. Sure. Um, we uh, applied for a number of them, and it was one of those things where they said, be honest with you, there's so many from Lancaster, we got to spread the wealth, so they picked two. Yes. Right. It was uh, two years ago? Yeah. Three years ago, yeah. So they were part of it. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things where we submitted like five or six of them, and they said, they're all fantastic, we'd love to have them, but we got to spread the wealth. And we're one of the few school districts that have even two presentations, so we're excited about that. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Valley. 10.0, old business. Uh, does anyone have any old business to discuss? I do, Pat. Um, yeah. I just wondered if I could ask the board. I know I've had quite a few people from the community um, approach me and just ask if we could bring back the speaking forum before meetings. Um, I know that hasn't been in effect for a while, but um, I just wondered if that was something the board would be interested in thinking of, of doing and maybe just adding that portion before the meeting. Maybe uh, we've had some folks that don't want to stick around maybe for the whole meeting. But then I also think it's important to keep the speaking portion after because you're going to get both sides of the, um, the spectrum there where people want to speak maybe before, maybe they want to wait until after. Um, just something to think about because I know we got um, correspondence from Mr. Foley, but I've also been approached by, I would say, about three or four other community members about bringing that back. So just... So you're saying moving the uh, public forum to before new business? No, just adding, adding back. A second like one? A second. <clears throat> Maybe thoughts on, I know like the, the uh, town meetings, they have like a, a specific uh, time limit, maybe 15 minutes before a meeting, whoever gets on that, you know, I know it's, uh, they have to sign up, so it's kind of a first come first serve type of a, a deal, but um, maybe limiting the time in the beginning just so that you're not, you know, two hours before and two hours after so, sort of a thing. But I know that there's some interest in getting that before the meeting. Some, something to think about. Yep. Okay. Uh, it is something to consider, um, and I'd be interested to hear feedback from, you know, the other board members. Um, with respect to two, I don't know that we need two. Uh, I don't know that I'd be... Uh, in favor of that, um, I think we revamped our policy based upon things that were going on at the meetings, um, and right now that policy is working for us. Um, you know, with respect to people who claim, <coughs> you know, I, I want to have a, a chance to speak before people vote on things. Um, I see that, but the, the counter to that is that any time we have an action item, it's been up for information for two or three meetings before. So they've had an opportunity to come speak on those issues. It's not like we just throw things on the agenda and then we speak, or then we vote. Um, so, for me, you know, just my opinion, I, I think everything can be covered in one forum. Whether that's at the beginning or the end um, is just a matter of procedure, but I would like to hear feedback from the other board members as to how they feel about that. Go ahead. It's a bit of a safety net. I mean, it, it's true that if there's three, you know, you have two readings, then you adapt the policy, but if for some reason that person wasn't there at the previous meeting or so on, it would just give them a, a chance. And like I said, I think limiting the time, I wouldn't expect, you know, a two or plus hour 
forum, but I would say just limit that. And there might be a couple of people that just want to address a couple of issues before they're voted on. It's happened before, so. Right. Correct. That's a good idea. Well, other, um, other feedback, Mr. Sage? You know, uh, thinking about it, I, 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 I do see some uh, use of having uh, the public forum before action items. Um, you know, I think sometimes people want to be heard before we, we vote, and uh, I think that uh, it wouldn't be a, a terrible idea. Uh, as for two, I, I, you know, I can't, uh, I don't have any opinion on whether two would be helpful or hurtful. Um, I would possibly think about it, um, but there would have to be some um, parameters put around it. I would be in favor to only have the public address us in regards to agenda items only, and, and it merely needs to um, stick to the agenda items. And putting a time limit, I mean, we have a time limit now, and to say, well, we can't go over two hours, we really can't do that. You know, I mean, it would, it would continue as, as many as, as those in the public got up to address the different items. But um, I think it's something that we could possibly look at um, and possibly look at the policy that we have today. But once again, it would be restricted to only two agenda items only. Okay, anyone else? I mean, something to consider, but obviously you can, uh, anyone can understand the apprehension of this board. Um, we have to adapt the policy, um, do two things, really getting out of hand at board meetings. So, um, you know, my, my sort of motto is if it isn't broke, we shouldn't fix it. So right now that we'll really have to look at it with a critical eye, but any changes um, would have to be agreed upon, you know, amongst the seven member board. So we'll look into it in the future. Yeah, we changed in 2013. We had, in 2013 is when we went from th two to one. That's what I meant. And then it was changed again since then. Okay. But, but we used to, in, two, the, in 2013, we had two spots on the agenda. Yeah, That's what I meant. Right. I think the reason why we did go to one was, was it seemed to be repetitive um, because we would have people get up and say, um, you know, something before and then repeat the same thing afterwards. It was, um, we didn't, it, <clears throat> it may be more productive. We, at the time, I think when we changed it, it was a conversation. Do we keep the one afterwards? Do we keep the ones before? Um, you know, and I think it, it felt right to keep it at the end, I believe, because it just, uh, it tended to wrap up the meeting and, and people could voice their concerns on things, whether they thought it was something down the line or something that, um, you know, it, it certainly wasn't um, with the intent of, um, you know, fixing a, an imperfect system. I think it was just, we had so much repetition that was taking place at the time and it was just um, made it harder to, to kind of wrap those things up at the end, so. Bill, do you think now that there's, um, you know, you have to call ahead, that that would cut down on, it's on, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, do you think that that would cut down on the redundancy, I suppose, that you're talking about? It might be something that, that I think we could look at, but, you know, I... I Right. Just because before you didn't have to call ahead, now you're calling ahead. So you're either going to be ahead of the agenda or after the agenda. So I can see the need for someone to speak twice. That's all I'm saying. And I, I, I can see that as well. I, I just, um, I guess we'd have to kind of come to a decision as, as the group of us, what would work best for, for all concerned, not just, um, you know, I, you know, I've gotten the letters too from, from some people that said that they wanted to move it to the beginning and because they want to make those conversations take place prior to us voting on certain things. So um, I, I don't know if any one of us would um, is adverse to that, but I, I, I would, I caution adding another uh, item to the agenda. But, um, you know, I think that's something we can discuss, uh, obviously, at some point. So I, I'd be open to hearing everyone's opinion and kind of go from there. Okay. 
Okay, one other piece of old business. We had uh, Howard Smith, who is a consultant who came and uh, gave us some uh, guidance as to uh, uh, how uh, good governance is uh, undertaken and we were going to follow up with him. So we have some dates. Uh, Dr. Vella, if you want to share those with the board, we can check our calendars. Yeah, Dr. Smith and uh, both the board and Dr. Smith uh, sort of uh, had it uh, one of the goal, one of the things that they wanted to do was to come back. They didn't feel like they finished everything. Um, and I talked to uh, Howard and he said uh, he would need about two more hours and the board wanted to do that and come back and finish what we started uh, at our retreat. Um, so the date he gave me was November 7th, the date of our, not uh, the October board meeting, but the November board meeting, November 7th. And with two hours, he recommended uh, doing the two hours before the board meetings. That would mean moving it up to six to eight. Uh, so meeting with Howard Smith from six to eight and starting the board meeting at eight, or starting the meeting at seven as it's presently scheduled and uh, doing the two hours afterwards. He just said that uh, his preference always with consulting is getting people fresh and uh, having that conversation uh, beforehand, but he will do whatever the board would like. Well, <coughs> when we <coughs> when we left, um, he was going to look for this, like a date that uh, coordinated with a board meeting. I can certainly go back to him and ask him about a Saturday, but uh, the general consensus the general consensus was trying to find like a two-hour block connected to a board meeting. So the date is November 7th. So just write it down. Um, I'll uh, have that, Mrs. Janik will communicate that and then we'll get some feedback from people within the next couple of weeks or so. And if we, if we don't wanna do those two options, we can consider something else as well. So it's just throwing out that date in those time blocks. I have, I have a suggestion. Does it have to be on a board meeting date? I'm not available on the 10th. I was throwing it out there to see if people have oh, off. Okay. Um, it would, no, it's a Friday. Question is it's a Friday. Yeah. And that way, if it's a late meeting, you then know, you might not come It's just an idea. Seventh is fine with me. Let me know what time. Okay. Mrs. Janik, if you could send that email, and then we'll gather some information. Okay. Anyone else have any other old business? Okay, 11.0, new business, 11.1, .1, personal items. 11.1.1, uh, before we uh, take a motion here, are there any <coughs> teachers who were just hired and are being approved for this evening that are in attendance for this evening? What? Support staff. Anyone. Or support staff, anyone who's on the agenda to be approved tonight. We just, uh, the reason I ask is we sort of set a precedent to have those people stand up and introduce yourself and tell a little bit about yourself, um, not to put you on the spot. And if you're here and you're seated and you don't want to stand up, I understand that too. Um, but that being said, if we don't see anyone, um, could I have a motion to accept the personnel changes as written? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.1.2, uh, could I have a motion to accept the tenure recommendations for this evening for teachers? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.2, education items, 11.2.1, .1. could I have a motion to accept the Committee on Special Education's report? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.0. Business and financial items, 12.1, uh, could I have a motion to accept? 11.2.2. Oh, committee on, 11.2.2, uh, could I have a motion to accept the committee on preschool special education? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved, thank you. 12.1, could I have a motion to accept the financial items? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on those? <clears throat> All those in favor? Those opposed, so moved. 12.2 is a policy adoption of uh, 5322, the use of district cell phones. Could I have a motion to accept that plan? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? 
Those opposed? So moved. 12.3, policy adoption 6213, registration and professional development. Could I have a motion to accept that policy adoption? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.4 and 12.5 are second readings of 5675, student grading information systems and 7616, pre-referral intervention strategies. I have a question, please. <coughs> yes? Is 76 Okay, 12.6, uh, could I have a motion to accept the bond issue change orders? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on those change orders? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Those opposed? So moved. 12.7, could I have a motion to appoint our fire inspector? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Those opposed? So moved. 12.8 is a bid award for printing. Could I have a motion to accept that bid award? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.9, uh, could I have a motion to accept the surplus equipment report? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.10 is uh, Erie One Bosey's room rental. Could I have a motion to accept that agreement? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.11 is an extra classroom activity club. Could I have a motion to accept that proposal? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.12 are the 2016-17 Board of Education goals, uh, and I'd like to go through those. Uh, we did meet with a uh, consultant, uh, Dr. Howard Smith, uh, and we are sort of revamping the process by which we set goals for the Board of Education. Um, uh, part of the training was highlighting the difference between, say, uh, district goals and board goals and clarifying uh, how those should be written and what their intent is. Uh, so we are in the process of uh, making some changes in not only how those uh, goals are developed, but how they're implemented as well. Um, but for right now, we have some goals that we have put forth. Uh, under policy and board knowledge base, uh, to adopt a code of ethics for board members and all district personnel, a policy and amend uh, in accordance with Erie One Bolsey's policy services and the NYSOSC recommendations. Uh, as Mrs. Christopher mentioned, uh, adopt a policy on water testing for lead in all school buildings and implement water testing in all buildings. Uh, update reserve fund policy and approve the LCSD reserve and fund balance plan. Uh, update the community on the present state of NYSED reform agenda. Um, for instance, the standards, assessments, uh, the uh, APPR, and the LCSD uh, student achievement results. Uh, create an alternative plan to meet in, uh, the requirement of the Board of Education to visit each school. Um, you'll notice that many times uh, we are at a different school and that's the way that we uh, meet our requirement, but we'll, look, we'll be looking into some different ways to satisfy that requirement. Uh, under student achievement, we have uh, support increased student achievement and success for all students pre-K to 12, including the expansion of opportunities in STEM studies, alternative programs, and educational technology. Uh, and as everyone has gathered, uh, if you have students here or have read the paper, uh, we lead the way, no pun intended, uh, in incorporating technology uh, in all of our buildings. So uh, Lancaster is viewed as a pioneer in many of those programs, and we hope to continue that. Continue the exploration and establishment of an alternative school for uh, Lancaster students. Review the organization of schools uh, and boundaries as well. Finan under finance and operations, review the impact of the up upcoming minimum wage increases and impl implement a plan that charts, charters a course for the district in the coming years. Uh, move phase five and six of the $57.3 million bond issue forward from planning and design to start of construction. So our revamping and uh, continuing to improve our campuses uh, continues. Uh, create and implement the NYSOSC financial condition report corrective action plan. Support and monitor the implementation of the approved Smart Schools Bond Act, and that's device purchasing and implementation, continuing professional development, 
preliminary planning for UPK facilities and exploration of the next generation technology applications. Uh, the Smart Schools Bond Act is uh, where many schools uh, receive funding for implementation of technology and increasing uh, wireless capabilities, uh, and Lancaster continues to march forward there. Under health and safety, we have developed an implementation plan for Education Law 807.1-1-A, uh, adding a requirement of four annual lockdown drills at each building. Support and monitor the district's efforts to create a written workplace safety plan and protocols for that plan. And then review and update the LCSD allergy policy and administrative regulations to improve safety for these students. Uh, I think we have a decent set of goals, uh, and I think this is something that uh, would be the best for our district moving forward in all phases. Uh, does anyone have any, well, first of all, can I have a, uh, a motion to accept the board goals for this year? So moved. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 13.0 public hearing. Uh, we have no one signed up to speak this evening. 14.0, our future presentations, we have uh, the district's technology plan will be presented on October 3rd, along with our school board recognition, uh, also on October 3rd, and we have a K-12 art show on the same date, October 3rd. 15.0, uh, could I have a motion to go into executive session to update the board regarding current litigation? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. Okay, at this time we'll be going into executive session. Effectively, the meeting is over, uh, but we will adjourn. Uh, uh, our next meeting, of course, is October 3rd at Hillview Elementary School at 7 p.m. Thank you for coming, everyone.